What's up everyone? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about tech roles that do not require coding. So I definitely appreciate it if you all hit the thumbs up. It helps out with the algorithm and my channel in general. Also, YouTube will push out this video to more people and I think this video is gonna be informative and helpful for those who are trying to break into the tech industry. So the first job that I wanna talk about in this list of tech roles that don't require coding is technical program manager or technical product manager. The average salary for a technical program manager, AKA a TPM is $125,000 and is set to grow 15% by 2024. Technical program managers are still program managers, hence the name program manager is still in the title, but their main responsibility is to drive the development for the product. They oversee many projects for a company, are expected to have the same relationship with customers and stakeholders like a program manager would, but technical program managers have more of a technical background and work more closely with the development and engineering teams. Technical program managers help businesses evolve their products through their technical expertise and program management experience. So a lot of times you'll see TPM roles that have a specific expertise that they're looking for, like maybe UI UX, cloud development, software engineering, mobile development. As a technical program manager, it is expected that you are responsible for defining requirements, defining project scopes, managing schedules, reviewing solutions for customers and generating reports. The next job that I want to talk about is Scrum Master. Now some of you all are probably like, what the heck is a Scrum Master? Y'all tech folks really do be making up jobs. Scrum Masters are in charge of the agile process that the Scrum teams follow and ensures that the company or the department are following Agile and Scrum frameworks. When a project gets pushed through and it's ready to get started, the deadline is created by the program manager, maybe the manager or director as well, and the customer. So they promise this deadline for the stakeholders or customers at this project, or this product, feature, whatever it is, is going to get done. And the developers just need to build it in time. So that's kind of like a waterfall method. And then there are those smaller tasks that maybe you're working on as a developer and you're expected to complete every task in the same allotted time frame. Even though we know as developers, every task isn't weighted the same. That can go downhill really quickly and can create a very toxic environment because program managers could have an iron fist and say, hey, I need this done now or ASAP. And let's just be honest, business folks really have no idea how long it takes to complete programmatic complex business logic. And when they have those type of demands, that can create tension and cause division between development teams and product. Trust me. I've seen a product manager not be empathetic to the developer team. And it's not a pretty sight. Their role is a more senior position. They kind of can act as like, not a manager per se, but they have that kind of pull. So when a program manager comes in, has these demands, maybe there's a new feature that needs to be built and they need it done in a week or whatever, the Scrum Master's job is to come in and say, hey buddy, we can't do that. We have a backlog of items that we're gonna be working on. We also have our items that we're working on for this sprint. Oh, by the way, sprints are two weeks long and when software development teams are working in a Scrum framework, they work in sprints, so increments of two weeks. The next job that I low-key considered doing and I technically am in this department, but I'm a software engineer, and that is UX designer. They have an average salary of $103,000. UX designers grew 20% from 2019 to 2020, so it's safe to say that it has a pretty good job outlook and is definitely in demand. So UX stands for user experience. You can think of UX designers as the ones who humanize technology. UX designers are in charge of making products usable and accessible for humans. UX designers are responsible for bridging the gap between the users, the engineering teams, and the stakeholders. The next job that I wanna talk about, it is pretty similar. <laughs> 
and how people kind of interchange the two or get them confused. The next role is product designer and they have an average salary of $105,000. Product designers are responsible for overseeing the design process. This is a very hands-on role and your skill sets are vital for landing a job. So you need to have skill sets in Adobe Photoshop, Adobe, some sort of prototyping application like Figma, Sketch, Adobe XD, and Adobe Illustrator. Product designers typically work hand in hand with developers. Once a new task is added to Jira, that's maybe a new feature or an improvement of an existing feature. Typically the designer will create the design for the new feature or improvement and then hand over those assets to the developer to translate into code. So as a product designer, it is expected that you obviously design. Think about the user's experience and typically they fold UX principles into their designs or collaborate with the UX team. Also work cross-functionally with stakeholders, the engineering team, and researchers. The next role is a role, I'm gonna be honest with you, I never really thought about this role. I've heard of it before, and that is tech sales. Tech sales has an average salary of $93,000 and a growth rate of 13% through 2026. Tech sales people are responsible for selling technology. I think that's pretty straightforward. Tech sales saw unique challenges for consumers by helping them improve the efficiency of their business through the selling of their products and services. You are responsible for connecting customers with technology that solve their problems or unique challenges. Think of a tech salesperson as like the Dwight Schrute of the office, but instead of them selling paper, maybe they're selling you the latest and greatest cloud service. So that concludes this video. If you're still here, give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below some tech roles that you're interested in, maybe some tech adjacent non-coding roles that I didn't talk about that you think are great. I definitely look forward to hearing what you all have to say in the comment section. I love interacting with you all.